so in previous class uh, we discussed about uh, the detection methods uh, to detect the original information from the dsbsc modulated uh, signal okay so we have two methods to detect the original information first one is a synchronous detector method and second one is envelope detection after carrier reinsertion so in this second method we have to add the uh, carrier to the modulated signal and in first method we have to multiply the carrier uh, with the modulated signal so in synchronous detection it is also called the coherent detection in this uh, uh, whatever the carrier that will be generated from the local oscillator at the receiver it should be in uh, in uh, synchronous with the frequency and phase with the uh, carrier at the transmitter so then only we will get the modulating signal at the output otherwise we have the uh, frequency description uh, discrepancy and the phase discrepancy at the output so we have these types of distortions uh, we will get at the output so the, uh, these two are the detection methods to detect the original information from the modulated signal right uh, that modulated signal is nothing but a dsbsc and here in this class i'm going to explain you about the quadrature amplitude modulation and this quadrature amplitude modulation we have the transmitter and the receiver but here we are going to modulate here we are going to modulate two message signals so that we will get the dsbsc modulated signal and these two signals occupy the same transmission bandwidth so what is the bandwidth of uh, two uh, dsbsc the bandwidth is equal to 2fm in dsbsc so for two message signals also here we uh, here we get the same transmission bandwidth we required to transmit the to dsbsc signal okay so that's why it is also called bandwidth conservation scheme here the two dsbsc modulated signals occupy the same transmission bandwidth uh, that is 2fm but in previous class what we discussed about only the single dsbsc will occupy the 2fm but here two D, uh, dsbsc signal occupies the same transmission bandwidth so here is the circuitry of the quad, uh, qam transmitter and qam uh, receiver so in this diagram you may observe uh, for uh, for modulating uh, two message signals, we need a two product modulator. So this is message signal M1 of T and this is M2 of T. So we need two product modulators and these two product modulators are modulated at the carrier frequency. But for the second modulator, the carrier will be having 90 degrees phase shift. Okay, so this one is a carrier here we are applying uh, and this carrier is in phase with the X1 of T and this is a quadrature phase with the X2 of T. So, and both these two signals are added by the adder and we will get the multiplexed signal at the output. So, what we will get the multiplexed signal. See here, we are considering at the transmitter, this one is X1, S1 of T and the second one is S2 of T. Okay, so here one of the output is S1 of T we are assuming and this one is S2 of T. So what is S1 of T product of X1 of T into cos 2 pi FCT and S2 and uh, product of uh, sin 2 pi FCT into X2 of T and these two signals will be added by the adder. So this one is uh, S1 and this one is S2 and finally S of T is equal to S1 of T plus S2 of T. So from the, uh, uh, this is uh, S of T is nothing but the multiplexed signal. In this, we have two different message signals. In this, we have two different message signals. So in this, we have the two different uh, message informations. So that here the bandwidth, 
uh, the bandwidth will be in the interval of minus FM to plus FM. And the, what is the total bandwidth here to FM, but in the same bandwidth, uh, we can transmit that to DSBSC signal. And also the centered carrier frequency is FC. So uh, from this, you can say FM is the bandwidth of the one DSPSC signal and another uh, FM is the bandwidth of the another DSPSC signal. So what is the total bandwidth to transmit these two message signals are two FM, two FM. Okay, this is at the transmitter and the receiver. What we are receiving the multiplexer signal S of T. It contains the it contains two DSPSC signals, and this message signal, this multiplexer signal will be separated at the receiver by using two product modulator and a ninety degrees phase shifter. And after that, it will be passed through the low pass filter. You will get M one of T, and here also you will get M two of T. So this is the QAM system at the receiver. At the receiver, we need a low pass filter and at the transmitter, we need the band pass filter. So here uh, we know that the multiplexer signal consists in multiplexer signal, we have two components. We already discussed uh, about that. This is in, in phase component, a 90 degrees phase shift out on the quadrature component and tamo. So that multiplexer signal consists of two components. One is in phase component and another one is quadrature component. Quadrature component and a into x2 of t because it will be 90 degrees uh, phase shift and in phase component a on the a into x1 of t and the multiplexer signal s of t from the qm transmitter so uh, it will be simultaneously up, uh, applied to the two coherent detectors so here we are considering at the receiver two product modulators and a low pass filter this is one synchronous detector and it is also called a coherent detector it will be uh, it is for the in phase channel and it is another product modulator and low pass filter this is another coherent detector or synchronous detector so in previous class uh, we discussed about the synchronous detector we know the diagram of the synchronous uh, detector so what are the blocks included in synchronous detector simply a multiplier or product modulator so not a multiplier it is a product modulator and after that it will pass it through the low pass filter so that product modulator and low pass filter blocks uh, co uh, combining these two blocks what we call it as a synchronous uh, detector so at the receiver we know uh, we need uh, two synchronous detectors uh, so these two synchronous de uh, detectors with two different local carriers one is nor uh, cos uh, omega ct and it will be 90 degrees phase shifted and so we will get um, sign uh, to um, uh, sign omega ct and the output of one detector will be 1 by 2 a into x1 of t and another one is 1 by 2 a into x2 of t so from this you can say uh, by using qam receiver you can easily separate the two message signals so we can extract the original information from the modulated signal here the modulated signal is nothing but the multiplexed signal Okay, so we can transmit the number of signals uh, like this. So this is quadrature amplitude uh, modulation. So this is a QM transmitter circuitry and this is a Q, uh, QAM uh, receiver circuitry. Okay, so what is the difference compared to this one? It allows the multiplexing of the signals, right? So that is nothing but quadrature amplitude modulation. And we have uh, another topic and these frequency errors and phase errors also we discussed in our last class. And here see uh, the carrier acquisition in DSBSC system or the synchronization techniques in DSBSC system. So we know the uh, we, in previous class we discussed about the synchronous detector. In that synchronous det uh, detector, what is the main point here? The uh, carrier which will be generated from the local oscillator at the receiver. It should be it should be synchronous in frequency and phase with the carrier. Uh, uh, with the carrier, it will be generated at the transmitter. So that is the main point. Then only you will get the output uh, uh, output uh, as the modulating signal uh, without a distortion, any frequency distortion or uh, any uh, phase distortion. 
but here we need some circuitry for the synchronization we need some circuitries to synchronize the local oscillator carrier with the transmitter carrier ante local oscillator lo generate aina carrier ni amanam transmitter carrier ke synchronize cheyali ante we need some additional circuitry so we have different types of techniques here for the synchronization for the synchronization so see here one of the technique is a pilot carrier one of the technique is a pilot carrier see here what uh, what we are discussing in dsp sc system the carrier will be suppressed completely and it transmits only the side bands that is upper side band and uh, lower side band so here for the synchronization of the carrier to the transmitter so here a small amount of the carrier signal that will be transmitted along with the dspsc signal along with the modulated signal that small amount of signal what we called as the pilot carrier so this small amount of signal will be transmitted along with the modulated signal that small amount of signal we call it as a pilot carrier so why we are using this pilot carrier for the synchronization only for the synchronization only so from this you can say uh in the received signal that is nothing but in the modulated uh, in the received signal uh, by the receiving antenna it contains it contains uh, the modulated information and along with the modulated signal we have a weak carrier a small amount of carrier which will be present which will be present and the received signal is uh, received by an appropriate filter and it is amplified after that uh, after that we have to use a phase lock the locally generated carrier signal at the receiver so ikkada manamu em chestunamo dsb sc signal lo carrier ni complete ga manamu suppress cheyatledu so actually this uh, dsb sc signal is called the partially suppressed carrier not it is a completely suppressed carrier for the synchronization we are transmitting the small amount of the carrier signal uh, with the modulated signal that small amount of carrier we call it as pilot carrier pilot carrier so we can say the dsb sc is a partially suppressed carrier so in this uh, uh, in this uh, we have a small amount of carrier will be present so by using this small amount of carrier what we are doing we are doing phase lock Uh, will be generated at the receiver so this phase locking provides the synchronization okay so in dsb sc one of the technique that will be used for the synchronization is a pilot carrier a pilot carrier so a pilot carrier ante mana receive cheskunna modulated signal lo em untundi modulated tho paatu some partial carrier information untundi so tarvata em chestamu receiver lo manamu filtering techniques amplifying techniques use chesi receiver lo edaithe manaki local oscillator untundo aa oscillator carrier ni generate chestundi so aa carrier tote ikkada manaki modulated signal lo unna carrier anedi synchronize ayinappudu so you will get the demod related output without any frequency and phase errors without any frequency and phase errors so this is one of the technique so by using this uh, partially suppressed carrier because of this you will get an over modulated am signal over modulated am signal if we use uh, uh, high frequency carrier means large amount of carrier that is equal to the conventional fm but here we are uh, transmitting the only small amount of the carrier signal so you you will get uh, over modulated am signal and in this uh, the carrier will not uh, carrier will not be suppressed completely so that's why this uh, dsb sc system is called partially suppressed dsb c okay and another method for the synchronous detection is costas receiver costas receiver so this is the circuitry for the uh, to achieve the synchronization to achieve the synchronization so this is the circuitry so this circuitry is called costas receiver 
cost of receiver. For the synchronization, we use the circuitry at the receiver. So uh, how can, uh, what is the circuit description here? We need two synchronous detector circuits. We need two synchronous detector circuits and a 90 degrees phase shifter. So this uh, here the carrier will be applied and here you may observe. Uh, what uh, what is the input to this product modulator one is cos of omega ct plus phi so what we are considering is the phase discrepancy we are considering if phi is equal to zero so it will be synchronous with the local uh, it, it will be synchronous with the transmitter carrier so you can observe what we are calling this is i channel in phase channel and the carrier name on 90 degrees phase shift just now but what we call it as a quadrature channel and this combination of product modulator and a low pass filter we called a synchronous detector so this is i channel synchronous detector means in phase channel synchronous detector and this is a quadrature channel synchronous detector so product modulator is nothing but product of uh, the modulated signal with the uh, carrier, which will be generated from the local oscillator. So after that, it will be passed through the low pass filter. So if we have any phase discrepancy, output will be equal to one by two X of T cos phi. So this uh, is, we already discussed in last, uh, last class as um, frequency errors and phase errors. If any uh, phase discrepancy is present, uh, what is the phase error at the output and if any frequency discrepancy is present what is the frequency error in the output at the output so we discussed uh, these two in uh, last class frequency error and phase error all right so here we are considering small uh, phase discrepancy. So the output, uh, uh, output uh, we will get the distorted output with the phase discrepancy. Okay. So for example, here we are considering uh, two cases. Here we are considering two cases. So first uh, case, uh, we, what we are going to assume is nothing but phi is equal to zero. Phi is equal to zero. So, man, ke local uh, carrier uh, generate in a uh, carrier signal yoka phi ni man wave and this kunt namo i is equal to zero and this kunt namo. If you substitute uh, phi is equal to zero, what you will get at the i channel 1 by 2 into x of t. And in q channel, what you will get, uh, it will be zero. Means the note, uh, no output will be present that will be called the quadrature null effect. And and in this condition, finally, what you will get the demodulated signal as 1 by 2 into x of t. So there is a, a no frequency error and phase error at the output. That is one case. What we are assuming, phi is equal to zero, we are assuming. So I channel lo manki signal present I undi, Q channel lo signal ane di zero I po indi. So final ga demodulated signal ane dostun. That is one of the case. So in second case, what we are assuming is assume that local oscillator frequency drifts slightly. That is, phi is a very small uh, non-zero quantity. So what we are assuming here is if phi is not equal to zero, we are assuming phi is very, very small. That is, uh, that is a non-zero quantity. So manke, phi and the very, very small kabati, what is the output here? Output of the I channel will be same. It will be unchanged. But the Q channel output uh, in the Munda case lo zero in the kada when phi is equal to zero this kunapur, but here phi is not equal to zero means here the Q channel output uh, not equal to zero and it will be equal to one by two x of t sine phi. And then Q channel lo output to 1 by 2 x of t sin phi. And these two signals means here you may observe here we have a phase difference and here we have a phase difference and this phi is very, very small. And this phi is very, very small. And here what we are assuming here, we have a phase discriminator. 
సో ఈ ఫేజ్ డిస్క్రిమినేటర్ ఏం చేస్తుంది ఈ రెండు ఫేజ్ యాంగిల్ మధ్యలో డిఫరెన్స్ ని దానికి ఈక్వల్ అయిన్ వోల్టేజ్ గా కన్వర్ట్ చేస్తుంది ఈక్వల్ అయిన్ వోల్టేజ్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ ఈక్వల్ అయిన్ డిసి సిగ్నల్ గా కన్వర్ట్ చేస్తుంది ఓకే సో ఇక్కడ ఫేజ్ ఇక్కడ ఫేజ్ డిఫరెన్స్ ని అది ఎలా కన్వర్ట్ చేసింది ఈక్వల్ అయిన్ డిసి సిగ్నల్ వోల్టేజ్ గా కన్వర్ట్ చేసింది అండ్ దట్ ఈక్వల్ అయిన్ డిసి సిగ్నల్ వోల్టేజ్ సో ఇక్కడ మీరు అబ్జర్వ్ చేయొచ్చు వీ హ్యావ్ ఏ వోల్టేజ్ కంట్రోల్ ఆసిలేటర్ ద నేమ్ ఇట్స్ self indicates input voltage controls the output frequency of oscillations ante ikkada vachina dc control voltage anedi denni control chestundi output lo frequency of oscillations ni control chestundi so the circuit itself adjusted to the synchronized frequency synchronized carrier frequency and phase ikkada ee phase difference ne manam em antamo error signal antamo ఏమంటాము సో ఎర్రర్ సిగ్నల్ బై యూజింగ్ దిస్ ఎర్రర్ సిగ్నల్ వీ కెన్ అడ్జస్ట్ ద ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ వీ కెన్ అడ్జస్ట్ ద ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ ఓకే సో వీ కెన్ కంట్రోల్ దిస్ ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీ అండ్ హియర్ వీ హ్యావ్ ద లిమిటేషన్ ఇన్ ద కోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ రిసీవర్ so in this cost of receiver so actually uh, how to check without applying uh, any modulated signal any modulating signal so we can check uh, the cost of receiver so the phase control establish and after the uh, after applying the modulated signal so it uh, it will have uh, we can get the same uh, modulated output without any frequency or phase distortion okay so this is the limitation so before applying modulating signal so you have to check the carrier uh, cos omega ct it will be synchronous with the local carrier so then only after that you have to apply the modulating signal so this is the second method for the synchronization first method is a pilot carrier and second method is a cost of receiver so in pilot carrier we are transmitting the small amount of the um, carrier signal along with the modulated signal that small amount of carrier what we call it as pilot carrier okay and uh, in costas receiver we need two synchronous detector circuitries so one is called i channel and another one is called q channel and also we need a, a special circuitry one is a phase discriminator and voltage controlled oscillator so phase discriminator if we have any phase discrepancy between this i channel and q channel that phase difference ni dc control voltage ga convert chestundi and it will be applied as input to the voltage controlled oscillator here the input voltage controls the output frequency of oscillations so that circuit itself uh, itself adjusted to the uh, synchronous uh, frequency and phase of the carrier and we have another uh, another synchronization method okay uh, so here the s of t will be squared by the squaring circuit so here another method what we call it as squaring loop okay so the output of the squarer will be a uh, square of the input here input is nothing but what we are considering a dsp sc signal product of message and carrier so for the simplification here we are assuming simply x of t is equal to cos 2 pi fmt so after squaring what you will get you will get this one okay so a square by 4 into 1 plus cos 2 omega mt cos 2 omega ct and along with this we have two side bands omega c plus omega m or 2 omega c minus 2 omega m okay and after that we have to use a narrow band uh, narrow band pass filter whose center frequency is a plus or minus 2 omega c plus or minus 2 omega c so here uh, by using uh, by using this uh, pll so we can track the phase we can track the phase and that phase should be in synchronous uh, with the uh, carrier which will be generated at the transmitter 
So here the PLL uses a negative feedback uh, circuitry. So here is the diagram of the squaring loop. So first we need a squarer. After that we need a narrow band pass filter. And this is a phase locked system. And finally, whatever the output, here the output will be generated. That output will be divided by two. So here the center frequency is plus or minus two FC. And here it will be divided by the, uh, two. So you will get plus or minus omega c so manaki ikkada carrier frequency anedi vastundi ante ikkada em chestunnamo manaku ochina message signal ni ikkada transmitter lo sorry receiver lo local oscillator carrier tho manam em cheyali synchronize cheyali appudu maatrame manaki undistorted output anedi vastundi so phase lock loop anedi next manaki oka separate topic undamma so akkada explain chestanu so this is a phase locked loop so phase locked loop lo maniki voltage control oscillator untundi and we have a low pass filter circuitry and ikkada em chuste frequency divider circuitry use chestunnam okay so this is the squaring loop so these are the circuits we need for the synchronization so you can use a pilot carrier or a costas receiver or the squaring loop okay so for the synchronization we need these circuitries okay